YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we're continuing on with the 420X build. Uh, I believe we got up to part 21, so this will be 22 and onwards, see how far we get with it. And I think the first parts we're going to be building is some of the drive shafts. So let's bring in for a close-up look and uh, see how far we get with it this time. Right, so to start with, we're going to want to get some of our graphite grease down into the, the ends of these drive shafts and this stuff gets absolutely everywhere so we're going to need as drive shafts we're going to need the Y4 parts drive shafts are the MC11 silver ones we're going to need the MC16 little barrels the tiny little grub screws these are 3 by 25 mil we're going to need the thicker of the pins. These look same as what you're going to fasten on the wheel hexes. And then the MC13s. So, I like to use the hoodie graphite grease instead of the Tamiya anti-wear stuff. Because I've had good experience with it in the past. So, you want to get your drive pin through the little barrel bit in the centre. And if you get enough of this graphite grease in there, it does make your job a bit easier because it stops the pin dropping out. Just have to make sure that your pin does go through the proper hole. And then we've got a threaded side of the barrel so, I'm going to get a tiny little grub screw, and I believe this will be a 1.5mm hex. So you just need to make sure your drive pin is central in it, and then get your 1.5mm hex. And just tighten it down then you should have a pretty complete drive shaft covered in graphite grease and so will your fingers be then we should be able to get these and I'm not sure how you meant to stretch these over but Should be able to get one side in and then the other. And we just need to get as little grub screw into the threaded side of this drive shaft. Make sure your pin's pretty central or as central as you can get it. It'll stop it popping out on you. And there we have it, covered in graphite grease, but we have two really smooth assembled drive shafts. So, let's crack on, see what else we've got. Right, so to start with, we are going to need two of the E8 parts. Then we're going to get an MC6. We're going to get one of the MB5 shims, which is the thinner silver one. So that's half a mil. Then we're going to get an MB4, which is a blue shim that's a full millimetre. And we're going to need to carefully screw these into the top. So the MC6, it shows you that it's a darker coloured ball connector. But there's also some lighter coloured ball connectors. But they don't have the little skirt on the bottom to go up against the washers. So... Once we've got that, we then need to get a drive shaft and we're going to need one of the 0.1 mil shims. So this is going to drop onto the drive shaft first. Then you're going to need a bearing. Then we're going to need the hub. 
Then we're going to need one of the little blue spacers that sit in between your bearings. That will be the MC8, then another MC9 bearing. Then we're going to need another shim. So these should keep your hexes from running on the actual inner race of the bearings. Then once you've got all that in place, you should be able to get your drive pin through. Once you've got that in place, you should be able to get one of your hexes on. Then we're going to need the 1.5mm driver again and one of the tiny little screws. And you should just be able to tighten down your hex and then it should all fit together and you should have very little to no play. So that's one assembled, we need to make two of these so I'll get this one built up and then we'll move on. So moving on, we've assembled these parts and these have to be 15.4 mil exactly. And make sure your two little dots are on the same side because you push them down onto these uh, ball joints and the dots go face down. One thing it does tell you to do is you've got a tiny hole in the bottom of these and it does tell you to make sure that that hole goes through but on mine they were pretty much through anyway so if we start screwing the little grub screw in just get it into place then we need to get as drive shafts and it does tell us to put a bit of anti-wear on these so let's get covered in uh, graphite grease again I'll try not to get covered in it, but it doesn't usually work. I usually get covered. So if we slide them into place, then you need the MC18. This should go through. Once we get that through, we can tighten it up. And your little grub screw should go through and tighten down to it. And that'll stop it coming out so we don't lose those inch bins. Then we should get the two little dots to the inside facing down. Then we just need to try and clip these on. So we've got that into place, we've got our uh, drive shaft covered in graphite grease. So you can wipe a bit of the excess off. But basically that's what we're looking for and now I'm just going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. Right so we've got both sides all built up and it's all running really nice and you should be able to check your diff make sure that's working so let's carry on right now we're assembling the other drive shafts or the front ones so we're going to need the looks like sprung steel but these are the 44 mil mc12s you're going to need an mc17 so we're going to get covered in uh, some more graphite grease now because I do find it works better than the Tamiya stuff. So we've got to get one of these barrels in. And the anti-wear grease does tend to help with this because it will hold it all together. Then we've got to line that up and get one of the little pins all the way through. And just make sure it goes all the way into the opposite side. Then we're going to need some anti-wear grease on the other part. We're going to 
to drop his little barrel through. Try and keep it lined up. And then it's telling you to make sure that you use the same holes to drop the pins through. So we're keeping them lined up. And then you drop that in. And then you should have a working drive shaft. And you just need to assemble the other one exactly the same. So we'll get that done and then we can carry on. So moving along, we're going to be assembling these drive shafts into the hubs. So we're going to have to put the Y5 part on the end of drive shaft. These are definitely fiddly and awkward. But if you get one side on, you can kind of work them round. And then they clip in. Then we've got another lovely part to put on. So basically with these, you slide them on from one side or the other and the little hook on them goes into the hole where your pin isn't so you basically locate it into where the hole is that doesn't have the pin through it and these are annoying to put on then you've got to try and work it round and I've not found an easy way of getting these on. So basically got to get them in. So the little hook goes in and it covers the holes with the pin in to stop it falling out. Then we've got to get one on the opposite side. And it's not really any easier when you don't put the Y5 part on because you've still got to get it over the pins and they're as wide as the Y5 part so let's try and get that into place and you can work it round so once you've got both your clips in we can then move along to building the rest of it up so we want a bearing we want an mc8 spacer we want the hub what looks like it's facing that way but the instructions aren't very clear on that then we need to put that in get the bearing then we've got a tiny little shim We've got our drive pin, we got a metal hex, then we're going to need a 1.5mm driver and the tiny little screw to hold his X on. And once that's built, you should have a fully assembled drive shaft. So we're going to build the other in exactly the opposite direction. And we should be good to go. So once we've got them assembled, that's what we should be looking at as far as I can tell. Looks like that is the direction it's showing us to build these up in. So let's move along, see what else we've got. So we want one of us top hat shims in the top and one in the bottom. So we'll get that into place. Then we're going to slide the hub through. And again, it's very difficult to actually tell which way around we're meant to be used in these hubs. But then we're going to need one of the tiny little shims. So we're going to need one of the MC5s and an MB6 shim. And we've got to get that screwed in the top. And then from the bottom... It looks like we should just have one of the MA2 screws. These are all going to be 2mm hex heads, so we can get that screwed in. Doesn't say we need any shims or anything in the bottom. Just one shim on the top of this one. So that should hold it all together. 
Then moving across onto this one, should I be number four to the front? So we want one of the sort of top hat shims in each one. And again, it doesn't show you which way around this goes. So once we get that in place, we need our tiny shim. These are the 0.7 mil shims. And then there's MA2 screw in the bottom. Should be able to tighten that up and tighten the top one down. So looks like that's what we should end up with. Now, whether or not these are right way around, wrong way, or it makes no difference, <laughs> we shall have to find out. So, we just need to move along and uh, see what else it's got in store for us. So, just looking at this, I think these ones should have been the silver one. Because these, I believe, are 8mm thread. And I believe these are 9mm. And I think it should have been these that screw into the top of these to match the silver that we've got on the actual spacer. It's just not particularly clear on that. So... We'll get that swapped for the 9mm silver ones. We're going to need the two carbon arms. We're going to need the two 8mm ones of them. Then we should have the MC7s. So I guess we'll see if these screw onto these threads. Yep. So I think we're right on that. Then we have the 2mm spacers. And then finally just an MA2 screw to come down from the top onto the carbon part. So to assemble all these, we're gonna drop the carbon arm in. You're gonna put an MA2 screw coming down from the top. So once we've got that in, you want one of the ball joints coming up from the bottom, but we're gonna need the two mil shim or spacer on that. So we can pop that through we can then hold that into position and we just need one of those little lock nuts and we can tighten that down so that makes more sense that's what we're going to be looking at we just need to assemble exactly the same for this side and then we can move on so you need these two built up like that and then you need to build yourself a couple of the turnbuckles with the dots on the same side and the measurement of these needs to be 17.6 mil. So let's move on to the next part. Right, so once we've got these assembled, you need the hinge pins, little tiny grub screws, cause we've got a hole that it tells you to poke through on the bottom. Uh, mine were nearly all the way through, so I just cleaned them out. It does tell us to put some anti-wear grease on the inside of these. So let's try not to get too covered in it. So once we've got that on, it's a little bit awkward for me to see, but I'm trying to keep it in shot on camera. So we need to get the drive shaft in place. And then we can get as hinge pin through. If I can actually see it, that's better. So we need to get as hinge pin in position. Then we've got our tiny little grub screw. So I'm just going to flick the RC upside down and then you can see where the grub screw screws in. So once you've got that screwed in, we can flick it back over, make sure it's drive shaft where it should be. Then we need to get one of these with the holes facing down. So 
So we should be able to clip that in place. Once you've got that clipped in, we've got the steering connections that should clip into place. I don't think they'll be coming loose in a hurry. So we just need to do exactly the same on this side. And then we've got basically us front suspension all connected. So I'll just get this put together and then uh, show you how it looks. So there we have it. That is part 29 finished. And I think that's a good place to leave it at the minute. We've got functioning steering. We've got a suspension arms in place, all the drive shafts on. And it's starting to look a bit more like a touring car. Not sure if the servo mounts that side or this side. Can't remember. But uh, yeah, that's a good place to leave it at the minute. And I've really enjoyed this build so far. The, the sort of craftsmanship in all the parts, the machining on them, everything seems really, really impressive. But let's wrap this one up. So there we have it. Parts 22, I believe it was, till 29 on the 420X. And it's really coming together now. It's a little bit fiddly, these last few sections. And the instructions kind of not exactly clear which way around these are meant to go. You have to kind of look forward in instructions to see if you've got them right way around. And you're never quite sure. Could be clearer pictures on assembling these before you get to the part where they're assembled. But... Thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share to friends and family. And uh, hopefully catch you guys again. See how this 420X turns out.